Hey VC, Jack here. Welcome to Vinyl Martini. Time of year that we're all looking forward to. The, the beginning of the year when uh, Rob Walker uh, posts his 20 questions of uh, Vinyl Tag 2023. So without further ado, uh, let's get started with the first question. Favorite purchase of 2023? Well, this was one of actually one of the last purchases I made in 2023. I was uh, going to the record store in anticipation of these questions for Vinyl Tag 2023 and I was looking for an album that was released in 2023 and the prices were just just drove me away like they always do so I did not end up getting something that was released in 2023 but I did end up getting this a, a beautiful copy of Gary Newman's Savage this is a double album I listened to it I've listened to it twice now fantastic record I am on a big Gary Newman kick have been for the last couple of years his records are kind of hard to come by here's the uh Here's the download card. If you uh, if you want to check that out, might still be good. Very very spacey. Great cover. Great pressing. Beautiful record. Gary Newman. My uh, favorite purchase of 2023, and I made lots of purchases. Next is what was the last purchase you made in 2023? Well, I was talking about not being able to find an album that was released in 2023, but I was visiting my daughter in Vancouver, went to my favorite record store and found this. This was on sale. And this is Keith Richards, Vintage Winos, live recordings from Keith Richards and his band, I think in LA, it's a three-sided disc. I haven't even, I haven't even opened it. Um, it's a limited edition, two-tone vinyl, three new lithographs, New side four etching. So side four is an etching, one of those etching deals. So it seemed to be so popular today, but I'm a huge uh, Keith Richards fan. And I don't know if uh, Mike PC31 actually reviewed this record or not, because he is a huge Keith Richards fan. But uh, I'm gonna play this tonight or tomorrow night. So that was my last purchase of 2023. And they released two albums in the same year. Well, Alice Cooper released Love It to Death, probably one of the first records I ever bought. And the same year, they released another album, another killer album called Killer. Fantastic. Both albums are great and still play them to this day. Next, if you could listen to only, or sorry, let me just go back here. If you could only listen to music from one Decade, which decade would you choose? Well, I have to choose the 70s because I turned 14 in 1969. Um, that's when I first started getting, really, really getting into music. I was into the Beatles, etc., and the Rolling Stones. But I was able to buy some uh, my own music because I uh, had a job, etc. So the 70s, uh, fantastic decade for music. The 60s were great. Hey, listen, if you're a little bit younger than me, the 80s were fantastic. But for me, it was the 70s. Uh, show some music from Manchester. Well, here you go, Rob. There's a band that you turned me on to, I think, and Mike, PC31, and lots of guys from the UK love this band. This band is called Magazine, of course. Two guys <clears throat> from the Buzzcocks, Howard DeVoto, maybe just one guy from the, I'm not sure about that, but anyways, this is Magazine. Fantastic record, my first Magazine record. They are really, really hard to come by on the west coast of Canada, on southern Vancouver Island. Uh, but I'm always on the lookout for them, and uh, I will, uh, I'll persevere, and I will get some more magazine records. Great, great band. In 2023, which artist did you listen to the most? Well, I was listening to so much new music that uh, I did not have time to listen to a lot of the old, uh, my old classics or my favorite bands, but one band that uh, when I would take a break and go back to my collection, uh, I was always go back to the Drive-By Truckers. This is their 2022 release. Welcome to Club 13. You know, I always go on about the Drive-By Truckers and people are intrigued, not intrigued. Country alt rock, southern rock, uh, you know, sometimes a three guitar attack. Great band. I always go back to them. I love them. Make no excuses about that. Okay, show seven, seven inches. Now, I don't collect seven inches uh, per se, but I do have some. So I will show you a few. 
First of all, um, a single that came with Ian Drury's album, Do It Yourself. It's amazing that this song was not on the album, but the single that was included with the album is Hit Me With Your Rhythm Stick, which is a fantastic song, by far the best song that's included in this package. So, Seven Incher, Ian Drury. And included uh, with Elvis Costello's uh, Armed Forces was a EP, seven inch. Uh, what do we do on here? It's not even listed on here, but I know that they do Allison. Why is it on here? Yeah, they do Allison on one side, on side A. Accidents will happen. And watching the detectives on the other side. I can't read today. I'm sorry. Anyways, great, uh, great addition to, uh, to Armed Forces. That's hard to find with a single, by the way. Next, I do have an EP, mono EP. Uh, selections, extracts from the movie Hard Day's Night. Uh, side one, I should have known better if I fell. Uh, on the other side, it's Tell Me Why and I Love Her. It's in mono. This was released, I think, probably mid-70s. Next up, this is Rock Power Magazine presents Love Hate. <laughs> Mind Funk. Allison Chains doing Sunshine. Tipsy Wit. So, I think my brother uh, gave me the magazine and the, uh, and the 45 was included with the magazine. Next up is a bootleg, Bob Dylan. It's called Basics in G Minor. It's an EP. Uh, here's the cover, a really interesting cover. Uh, Talking John Birch, Paranoid Blues. Mama, You've Been On My Mind. On the other side, it, it's It Ain't Me, Babe, and a cover of Help. And it says, uh, remember that one? So the Beatles Help. So Bob Dylan. How about The Stranglers? Side A is Do the European. And side two is choose Susie. Nope, that's not true. Those are all on one side, that's side one. <laughs> I'm having a real hard time today. I'm so excited. And on the other side, they do a version of White Room and uh, their own straightened out. So, The Stranglers. And last but not least, number seven is David Bowie, 74. Uh, he does All the Young Dudes. Cracked actor and come back, my baby. So, there you go for my 45s. Who's coming to the party? Well, I thought we would have, first of all, why don't we have Tom Waits? He's never short of a few words. I'm sure he's got lots of stories. And I thought that I would also invite, just to balance things out a little bit. Mr. Evil himself, Helen Wolf. Sure, he's got a few stories. I'm also going to invite Keith Richards because he's got a few stories and he might actually, he's always got lots of stories, but he would certainly be in awe of sitting at a table with this guy. He might shut up for a little bit. But to, uh, to round things out and make sure that it's just not a sausage party, how about some Joni Mitchell? This is, uh, of course, we want to get Joni there when she's about 40 at the prime of her career. This is uh, her album, Hajira. It'd be great to, uh, to get that version of Joni Mitchell at the party. So those are the four guests at my party. And you guys were invited. Sadly, we lost them. So an artist that we lost in 2023, artist that doesn't get uh, talked about enough, this is... T.S. McPhee, Tony McPhee, used to be the guitar player, the founder of the Groundhogs, fantastic British blues rock guitar player, uh, does acoustic stuff, does uh, electronic stuff. This is his first solo record. But uh, he, uh, I think he had a stroke and he fell down and struck his head and died of complications of that. So very sad to lose Tony McPhee. If I could only listen to music from one country, Rob, you devil. I've been tossing and turning all night about this and I'm back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So 
Um, of course, the two, the two countries for me are England and the U.S. And uh, up, I just made my decision about a minute before I started this video. And I'm going to have to say the United States for this reason. Because without music coming from the southern United States, I don't think that the British music scene would have been what it was. So... Um, uh, the Beatles, uh, everything. I mean, I love English music. I love prog music. I love everything they, they did in, in the, in the seventies, fantastic, creative music. When, uh, when technology allowed them to go to eight tracks and 16 tracks, but, uh, blues artists, the Southern soul, the jazz, the, um, uh, country music. I just, so I, I, it was a really tough one. I know that a lot of people won't agree with me and they'll go with England or, I don't know, maybe they'll go with Argentina. But <laughs> anyways, I had to uh, make a decision. So, Rob, you caused me a real sleep this night. Thanks for that. VC Discoveries channel. Sorry, I don't have these numbered, so I, I have to keep on, my eyes have to keep on refocusing there. So I want to give a shout out to Jacob's Music Channel. He's got about 220 subscribers. He's from Denmark. He started the alphabet thread that we've all been doing. He's a great guy. Uh, he's always uh, looking for new music. Uh, fantastic channel. Uh, a new channel that I just started watching. The channel's name is Catherine S. She only has about 48 subscribers. And uh, the next uh, the next channel I want to uh, uh, give a shout out to is Marsha P. Uh, I really want, I, I really think we need a lot more music in, a, a lot more, sorry, female channel uh, drivers. Gets to be a big sausage party here. So I, I really like their perspective, the way they, uh, they, they call things out. So uh, if you, uh, why don't you uh, look them up, give them a sub, because they are very worthy. Next question. A record I bought when I was a teenager. Well, this is a classic, Becola, fantastic record with Rod Stewart. Uh, yeah, Ron Wood on uh, bass guitar, Nicky Hopkins on piano, Tony Newman on, uh, on drums, Jeff Beck on guitar, and uh, the vocal talents of Rod Stewart. This was a biggie for me when I was young. Love the old early Jeff Beck. Show me some soul or funk. Well, I got lots of soul and funk, but I thought I'd just show this guy, Charles Bradley. Um, Charles Bradley, sadly, only got his, his, his career going when he was in the 70s. So he was just uh, shuffling around. But he put this record out in, I'm going to say 2000 and, I think that's some, no date. No date, anyways, in the, in the, 2000 and teens, I think, put out about three records. This is a fine record. He's a, he's, you know, he sounds a lot like James Brown, of course, but uh, Confusion. Uh, Where Do We Go From Here? Crying in the Chapel, Hurricane, Through the Storm, all co-written by him. Uh, Let Love Stand a Chance, Strictly Reserved for You. So there you go, Charles Bradley. Very accessible. Great artist. Show a record that everybody has and show a record that nobody has. So I'm going to show Sgt. Peppers. I mean, I think everybody's got Sgt. Peppers. And the arguments go on and on about what's the best Beatles record. Some people say it's this. Some people say it's Revolver. Some people say Rubber Soul. Who cares? It's a great record from start to finish. Really influential. 1967. And an album that nobody has. Now, I'm not saying that... Nobody has this record, but I've never seen it shown. This is J.J. Kale's number eight. It's obviously his eighth release. Um, I'm a big J.J. Kale fan. But the reason I say that nobody has this is because this is a French pressing, and I picked it up in Paris last summer. So, J.J. Kale. Great record, by the way. Next up. Show a female artist that you bought in 2023. Well, for a little bit of a goof, I'm going to show you this one. I buy lots of uh, female singer-songwriters that I pick up for cheap. Uh, I really enjoy them, but uh, picked up my first Cher album. 
And you know what? It wasn't too bad. I, I think Cher could have gone a lot, lot further if she had not been locked up in a studio with the producer picking his songs and all the musicians because there's lots of lush production on this. If she had just been, uh, you know, recording with uh, two guitars, a bass and drums and keyboards, uh, I think she would have got a lot farther and maybe got a lot more respect. But uh, she had a great voice. And, you know, she's still uh, she's still going at it today. So, share. Show a 90s classic. Well, I don't really have a lot of stuff that was uh, released in the 90s because it's hard to find. This is a re-release. This isn't a band that I just got into a couple of years ago. This is Porcupine Tree and On the Sunday of Life. A beautiful record. This is their first record released in 1992. Big Porcupine Tree fan. Uh, whenever I feel like I owe my or I owe myself a new record that's never been played before, Inver invariably, <laughs> invariably, sorry, I can't even talk either. I can't read. I can't talk today. Uh, I head for the Porcupine Tree section and uh, pick up one of their uh, their older rock records. Fantastic band, Porcupine Tree. If I could walk into this cover, and I'm going to show this record, and it's a, a record by the Rascals. I think it was released in 1970 or so. It's called Peaceful World. And the album cover is a, is a painting by Gauguin. And I've always loved this cover. And I would love to be walking along that path behind this, uh, this farmer with his bunches of bananas and other produce looks so peaceful and warm. Perfect for a January morning. Peaceful World by the Rascals. An album that feels like a greatest hits album. Well, I'm gonna sh show this, Elvis Costello's first record. I bought this, I think probably within, within two days of its release and it just never seemed to leave my turntable. I would play it at least three times a night for like weeks and weeks on end. Uh, it's, uh, although he's not playing with the attractions, he's playing with the Clovers. And I think he was, re he recorded the record in LA instead of in England, which would have been uh, his choice. Uh, man, he, uh, he nailed it with this one. Welcome to the Working Week, Miracle Man, No Dancing, Blame It on Cain, Allison, Sneaky Feelings, Watching the Detectives, The Angels Want to Wear My Red Shoes, Less Than Zero, Mystery Dance, Pay It Back, I'm Not Angry, and The Great Closer, Waiting for the End of the World. So Elvis Costello, My Aim is True, his first record. And an album that turns 50, I know, there's a lot of records turning 50, a lot of great records turning 50. But another band that I just absolutely love, and I've been following them ever since they started releasing records, and that is Roxy Music, For Your Pleasure. Another brilliant cover. Shots of the band. I guess that's where they got their reputation for being a glam band. They, I don't... Maybe you consider them a glam band. I just consider them musical geniuses. Uh... I don't really think they were glam in, in the sense that the Sweet were glam or David Bowie was glam. Just solid, solid music. Uh, Eno was still with the band. You cannot find a bad Roxy Music album. And they only released eight or nine in a very short career. Roxy Music. So anyways, there you go. Roxy Music. And that is the end. So, Rob, thank you so much for putting those questions together. That was fantastic. I have not watched anybody's entries yet, but after I upload this, I am going to start. Uh, I'm going to start. Rob, thank you for the lovely shout out that you gave uh, gave me yesterday. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, Rob is such a great guy. Again, thanks for watching. Uh, like, give me a sub if you want. Uh, Till next time. Looking forward to more videos in 2024. See you later.